Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Lee Perry, and I'm the Chief Operations Officer of Ideas for Us. Tonight, we are very excited to introduce Delaney Ren Reynolds, the founder and activist of the Sink and Swim Project. Delaney, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Lee. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. As you heard, my name is Delaney Reynolds, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Sink or Swim Project. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about my work with climate change, as well as what I call the challenge of a generation. So to give you a little bit of backstory, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida but I grew up in part on a very small island in the Florida Keys called No Name Key. It's very small, 1,000 acres with only 40 homes on it that are all solar powered. So I grew up learning about sustainability, learning about the environment, basically living in the water. I loved it so much, swimming, fishing, diving, you name it, I was doing it. So I like to say that my life was surrounded by water and that's what led to my love of the environment of the ocean and along the way that love basically led me to write illustrate and publish three children's books on ecology topics in between elementary and middle school now as I was researching for those books, I started to learn about climate change, how it was impacting the, those animals, those environments that I loved so dearly. I ultimately learned how it was impacting the state of Florida and the world as a whole. And I decided that I wanted to write my fourth book on climate change and sea level rise. And so I started to do that. I started to interview scientists, politicians, homeowners, and learn as much as I can. I also went into the field a lot to see different types of flooding. Like you just saw in this video, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this video, please check it out. It's very impactful. Um, this is flooding in a beach that is less than a mile away from my home. And you can see here is a picture of me at two years old sitting on that beach, eating a French fry. This beach is actually called Matheson Hammock State Park, and it's where I learned to swim. It's where my brother, who's two years younger than me, learned how to swim. It's where my dad learned how to swim. And we've been here in Miami since 1910, so I'm the fourth generation of my family to live here. But on the right in this video, what you're seeing is that very beach flooding during a king tide event and sea level rise. And this is very common now. In fact, this entire part of the park that you're looking at is constantly being flushed with water. It's been eroded away because of sea level rise and climate change. And this is just less than a mile from my home, basically in my backyard. That's Key Biscayne or Biscayne Bay that you're looking at right there at the end of the video. And so that's the type of thing that we've been seeing here in South Florida that we've been facing that's been making me so worried about climate change and our future. So like I said, I grew up on this very small 1,000 acre island. There's a map of it. Uh, it's actually in the middle of two wildlife refuges. So it's in the Key Deer, as you can see, National Wildlife Refuge. They're very cute, as well as the Great White Heron Wildlife Refuge. And as I mentioned, as I was researching for these children's books that I wrote, I started to learn more and more about climate change. So once I was done interviewing scientists to learn all of the science that I could, interviewing homeowners and business owners to learn how they were being impacted, interviewing politicians to find out what they were doing in their cities, if anything at all. I decided that I wanted to compile this knowledge that I was gaining and share it with other kids just like me because I figured at age 14 when I started all this, if I wasn't learning about climate change in school, then there was a really good chance they weren't either. So as you can see, I started to lecture, especially to kids, um, pretty much to people of all ages, but I really liked to focus and like to focus on the youth generation. And that's because, like I said, this is the challenge of our generation. I believe that the climate change crisis is the biggest issue our generations will ever face and how we go about solving it will define our time here on this planet. So in these presentations that I give, I present real scientific slides from the IPCC reports, the Union of Concerned Scientists, NASA, and every single child that I've spoken to understands it once I've explained it. 
it is amazing. And at the end of every single one of my presentations, after I've gone through the science, after I've gone through implications, like the video I just showed you, the flooding that we're seeing, and after I go through solutions, kids often have more questions than adults, which is really, really awesome. Um, and gives me a lot of hope for the future in the fact that we will be able to solve this problem. So here's another picture of me lecturing to students. Again, they give me so much hope for the future. I think it's amazing how much they care about the environment, how passionate they are. And what's really cool is that in talking to a lot of them, I truly believe that once we're old enough to replace our current politicians who deny climate change, we absolutely will. So uh, watch your back if you're a climate change denier in politics, we're coming for you. So speaking of politics, another way that the Sink or Swim project is involved with climate change is through political advocacy. Um, so in this picture, what you're looking at here, this is me with seven of my friends and a lawyer all the way on the right holding the V. And this was the day that we filed a lawsuit against the state of Florida, its governor, its commissioner of agriculture, and their cabinet. So the eight of us filed a lawsuit and it basically is arguing that the state of Florida is not upholding their duties that are outlined in something called the Florida Constitution and the public trust doctrine that basically say that they must protect our environment, our waters, our land, our atmosphere. So by pumping massive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, they're not doing their job. They're not protecting our environment. So we're basically asking the court to make sure that the government, the governor, his cabinet, makes plans, makes laws that will start to cut back our carbon emissions so that we can try to reverse the damage that we've been doing. Um, so that's how the lawsuit started. This picture is back in 2018. We filed in April of 2018. And since then, in July, we just had our very first hearing so politics has absolutely gotten in the way and the judge decided to dismiss our case um, but he stated that he felt bad for doing so so we have filed our appeal and uh, hopefully we'll hear back on that very soon and uh, you can follow our children's trust which is the organization of lawyers that's helping us out pro bono or you can follow me on miami sea rise to stay updated with how that's going the good news is there is a lot of hope when it comes to climate change lawsuits. So while there are some other state lawsuits here in the United States and the federal lawsuit that unfortunately didn't come to fruition, there are other lawsuits all over the world that have done really well. For example, there's one in Brazil that just won its case. And here what you're looking at is a group of students who filed a similar lawsuit in Colombia, and they actually also won their lawsuit so that their government has to promise to protect the environment. So there's great hope and uh, we're hoping that we can achieve something like that here in the United States. Some other ways that I've been involved with politics include on the more local level. So here, for example, this is, um, as you can read, the City of South Miami Solar Power Mandate. So a couple years ago, I actually wrote a draft law that I proposed to the City of South Miami, and it kind of followed along three other solar laws that already existed in California. And it basically says that any new construction of a home or a material renovation over 75% has to install the maximum amount of solar power possible on its roof. And after many revisions and budget hearings, the law was passed back in 2017. And so that makes the city of South Miami the first city in the state of Florida and the state of Florida the second state in the United States to have such a law. Now the city of South Miami is very small and only a few homes since the law was passed have actually um, had to go through with putting solar on their roofs, but we live in the sunshine state of Florida. So if we could get solar mandates just like South Miami has all over the state, then we could ultimately become the solar state. That's my hope. And that would make a major difference when it comes to our carbon footprint. We would cut back on it dramatically and probably ultimately eliminate it completely, um, which is a very important step for our future moving away from antiquated technologies like fossil fuels and shifting our economy to one based on renewable energies. 
So hopefully we can see some more laws just like this one all over Florida and all over the United States. Um, I've also been very fortunate to work with the United Nations on behalf of the Everglades National Park. And I worked with a bunch of other youth, as you can see here. So we've, we visited the United Nations and spoke in front of the General Assembly in New York on World Oceans Day. And what we did is we pitched to them a pledge that we created called Our Oceans Pledge. And we asked all the excellencies and dignitaries to sign it in order to promise to protect the oceans for future generations. So after speaking to all of the assembly, we went backstage and a bunch of them came back and they signed our pledge. So that was a really great honor and a great way to share the message of climate change with a bunch of really important global leaders. Now back to my message of hope. Like I said, this is the challenge of our youth generation. We're going to be fighting it tooth and nail for years and years until we are able to take over. But as we've seen all over the world, through climate strikes, through youth speaking up and out and using their voices for what we believe in, we're seeing changes. We're seeing little changes in grassroots movements. And like I said, it completely inspires me and motivates me to continue to work on these issues even more. Um, so I have great hope and I'm just so inspired by every single youth who goes out into the streets, who works behind the scenes to do everything that they can to help vocalize our passion for solving the climate change crisis. Um, so that was my little presentation. You can check out our social media accounts um, at Miami Sea Rise and our website, miamiseerise.com. Um, so I guess, Lee, if you have any other questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Incredible, incredible. So proud of you. So proud of your dedication and your hard work. And I'm sure you're pretty frustrated of just hearing words. You want to see action, right? Maybe in your words, you can tell me what happens if they don't respond? You mean if like politicians don't respond to our asks? That's a great question. So if they aren't responding or they just refuse to even meet with us or anything like that, um, then we're just going to keep pushing. We know that the climate change crisis is bigger than any of us. It's going to impact every single one of us. And the great thing about climate change is that it doesn't see red. It doesn't see blue. So it's not a partisan issue. However, that means it's going to impact everyone, every single aspect of society. There's no one that climate change won't touch. So knowing that, I say, let's vote. <laughs> we have a huge election this November, and the only way that we are going to get climate change solutions in the Oval Office is to vote, to use our voice, to use our vote. Um, if you're older than 18, Tell your friends to vote, tell your family to vote, make a Zoom party, talk about the different candidates, their pros and cons, make a list, debate, in a friendly debate, <laughs> um, but talk about the different things that you're passionate about. You know, every candidate has something that you may agree with or disagree with. Personally, I'm going to be a climate voter this year, and I would encourage everyone else to as well, because we don't have any more time to lose. So if you are of age, please, please, please vote. That is the biggest way that you can help the environment as of right now, this year. And last but not least, what do you tell a fellow student or even an adult that has succumbed to apathy because they feel like everything's pointless? What is your advice to those individuals? My advice to them is to honestly look around, look online, look through social media. There are so many, there is so much evidence of youth involvement. Like I said, we're seeing kids all over the world coming out in droves thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of youth standing up and fighting for what they believe in when it comes to climate change. Clean solutions, mitigation, adaptation efforts. There is so much hope to be had, even though things right now may seem scary, even though a lot of the science is scary. There is hope. We 
absolutely can and will implement the solutions that we need, whether it's through current politicians, whether it's through local grassroots movements for the time being until we can get higher up powers to talk about climate change and discuss it. There is hope. We have the technologies to be able to do this. We have the money to be able to do it. So to do it now will actually be even cheaper than if we were to continue to wait and do it further in the future. In the future, it'll cost trillions and trillions of dollars. So have, have hope. Look around and look at the youth who are extremely passionate about the environment and who are stopping at nothing to have their voices heard. That's very well said. Thank you so, so much. You hit every point. Awesome. Thank you all for listening. And I'm so excited. Definitely check out the Sink or Swim project at www.miamiserise.com. Thank you all and have a wonderful night.